Okay, this is inspired by Marami Small Art, and I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it. The artist's name who owns that YouTube channel, her name is Marta, and she really inspired me to break out all of my texture gel mediums and scraps of paper, brayers, and different things, and product packaging, and just start layering things on top of each other and creating some fun texture. It reminds me a lot of uh, Finnabar. Um, she really does a lot with that too. And so here I'm just using a used dryer sheet, a bounce, bounce sheet. Um, and I'm just crinkling it up and using some gel medium to adhere it to some product packaging. Now, as during the process of doing this, I discovered that I had a lot of almost empty jars of things some things that were dried up and you'll see some of the video footage where I try to stick the palette knife and some things and it's just completely hard and I tossed it out. So this really um, just hit home for me to just have fun with the supplies that you have. Use up what you have and don't waste them uh, by letting them dry up and just sit there uh, so then you have to throw them away. Uh, I'm tearing up other product packaging here and using uh, this uh, matte medium, this is a Liquitex matte medium to, um, uh, it's matte gel actually. I used up the jar, yay, it was one of my goals, um, to add it to other product packaging and just create some fun layers. The idea is to create some layers, create some textures, experiment with what you have, add some gesso. Um, I found out during the process I had mediums I'd forgotten I had. <laughs> I didn't know I had... Um, um, uh, string gel. I didn't know I had, uh, I'd forgotten I had um, glass bead gel. Uh, I also had um, coarse texture paste, I think, or something like that. Anyway, I'd forgotten I had some of these things. Uh, and I'd had some things that I really loved that I didn't use up before they dried out, unfortunately, like the jar with the black lid to the left of your screen, just under the piece of Tim Holtz tissue paper. Um, that is a really, was a really great, uh, sparkly gel medium. And yeah, when I went to go use some of it, it was completely dry and that'll show up. There it is. Pumice gel. So I forgot I had pumice gel. I didn't know I had it. Um, thankfully I just had a small jar of it. Um, and I don't think it had ever been opened. So, um, I do remember buying, um, a small variety pack of golden, uh, mediums to, um, experiment with and, that's where some of those little jars came from and I'd forgotten I had them. So this process brought those out. I used a um, uh, patterned uh, putty knife there. This is the string gel. I don't know. It must have come in the sample pack because I don't remember. I don't know why I would buy string gel. I'm not even sure what you're supposed to use string gel for to be really honest with you. Um, but it cre does create a neat texture. And I'm just hanging these up on the clips above my desk as I make them, I'm using old paper, uh, I'm using the used dryer sheets, other product packaging, uh, bits and pieces of leftover tissue paper. Um, I have lots of gel mediums that have glitter and seed beads in them from, and micro beads from a swap we did over in Crazy Island Family. And I'd forgotten I had those <laughs> and some of those were dried up, unfortunately, but I did have quite a few that weren't. So we, I used those and, um, I had a little container of, you know, the dried up blobs you get on the top of your paint tubes. I don't know why I just can't seem to throw those away because we're mixed media artists, right? We don't throw anything away. So anyway, I had a little bucket of those. So at one point I grabbed those out and I use those. I've got masking tape and a couple different kinds of drywall tape. And I'm really not thinking too much about what I'm doing. And I'm just having fun with the process. And that's the point is just at this stage, just have fun with the process and use what you have. Don't go buy anything special. Uh, this is one of the kinds of drywall tape and it's sticky. So I stick it down and then I realize I've got the sticky back that I pulled off. Well, that could be used on something. So I don't throw any of the little bits away. And this is a great way to use up some of those little bits. Uh, and you know, if you're like me and you have a couple different kinds of gel medium, 
then use those two to create texture. You can run them through a stencil and they create an interesting texture. You can just scrape them on with a putty knife and leave marks in the gel and it'll create an interesting texture. Um, just have fun with it and use up what you have. There's some of the glitter. That, yeah, there's, <laughs> those were all hard. Those were all hard. I do finally find one that's not hard. Now, if you are using the heavy gel mediums or the glitter, ones with glitter in them, or, um, you know, any of the heavy, thick gel mediums, especially the textured ones, uh, through a stencil, make sure that you soak your stencil when you're done and that you clean it off really well because it will leave, um, it'll adhere to the stencil and it'll ruin your stencil if you don't. So uh, I had a bucket of water next to me with some water and Murphy's oil soap in it. And um, I just put it in there and let it soak when I was finished and all of it just peeled right off. So just make sure you clean your stencil as soon as you can. These are fabric scraps left over from the belly band video um, that you may or may not have seen yet. I'm not sure when this airs, if it'll have aired already. Um, but they're less to, leftover pieces of fabric from a sewing 101 video and I use those too. Nothing was beyond the realm of possibility to be used and those were the backings to the drywall tape. <laughs> so just it's a great way to use up scraps to use up all those little tiny bits of leftover gel medium that you've got laying around in a jar that you know very well if you don't use it soon it's going to dry up um, and just to get them used up and in a creative way uh, I pulled out some chipboard and cardstock die cuts and used them. Um, just everything. I knew I'd been saving these product packaging things for a while for a reason. I just didn't know what the reason was. <laughs> so I just grabbed whatever was around and in front of me and laying around or things that I'd, for, you know, I knew I had but I hadn't opened in a while. Um, like the chipboard box of chipboard and die cuts. I pulled some things out of that and used them and created a giant stack of really interesting texture things. And I, I love to do use dryer sheets anyway in my art, but this is just another way to use them. They create an interesting uh, fibrous texture. Um, cheesecloth would work too, and I had some of that, but I didn't want to stop and grab it. So, <laughs> but uh, the dryer sheets, you know, we most of us have dryer sheets, so use them. I'm just hanging stuff up. When you see me pause like that, it's because I'm hanging things up. And I am not really stopping to clean my palette knife too much. That actually is an old whisk from my grandmother's estate that was all rusty and weird. And I couldn't, I didn't have the heart to throw it out. I wasn't sure why. It does leave an interesting texture in the gel medium. And I'm thinking it would be an interesting texture in acrylic paint too. So it'll be, it'll be fun to play with. It's rusty, so you can't use it to cook food with. <laughs> so there's some more of the um, gel medium that I've made from uh, that swap with Crazy Island Family. And um, those are fun. The lesson to be learned there, though, is don't make more of it than you really need at that moment because it really doesn't keep very well. I ended up throwing, I think, four or five jars of it away because they were completely dried up into blobs and they were adhered to the jar so I couldn't dig them out because, believe me, I tried. <laughs> um, and it just wasn't going to happen. I'm really trying hard not to use so much of the golden gel medium um, not because I don't like it, but because I really want to use up this jar of Liquitex. I've had it for a while, and it's actually not my favorite. I prefer the golden gel mediums. They're thicker, uh, and the, gel, the Liquitex ones are a little bit more watery. So I'm really trying hard to use this jar up because I've had it forever. And um, that was the other kind of drywall tape, by the way, that I had the mesh that I stuck on there. That's another kind of drywall tape. And, yeah, don't forget about using your fingers. Um, your hands and your fingers leave interesting marks and texture, too. At the end of this video, you will see where I pull all of it down after it's dried, and um, I give everything just a quick, light brush brushing of gesso, and that really makes some of the texture really pop out. Um, I don't try to cover the whole thing with gesso uh, because the paper and the mediums, they're all going to take paint differently. So when we do uh, the painting step in part two, uh, I want the 
tech these texture panels and for lack of a better term to i want them to take the paint differently so that's going to be part of building up the layers and building up the texture visual and 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 physical texture is not to have it all gessoed and primed and you know to have some of the paint beat up in some places where there's you know a real slick surface and nothing for it to absorb into and other places where there is gesso and it can absorb into it's going to look differently and i want that um these this is some of the crushed lava rock from nevada um, that I put mixing here in right into the gel medium. I got a big chunk in there, so I'm there. I'm trying to cut it up or break it up so that it's not so big and bulky in the piece. And I just had a lot of ball, a lot of fun with this. Uh, I had a ball with it. I turned up the music and I got all my supplies out. I went through every drawer and cabinet I had and dug all my mediums. And texture things out and I just had fun with it uh, I could have done pulled out more things but um, to start with I wanted to use there were a few things like I said that I wanted to use up so I, I focused more on that the next time I do this I'll be using different different tools and probably different uh, bits and pieces it's just it was just so much fun i encourage you guys to try this don't think about it too much don't think about what the end product is going to end up being um, don't think about it being perfect it's totally not about that um, and this is one of my stencil new stencil designs and i end up sticking my finger on part of it but that's fine <laughs> i don't know that you can see it because i think it's off camera but it's all right <laughs> Um, just have play and have fun. I don't want you to analyze what you're doing too much. Um, turn up the music, have some fun with it, and just experiment and play. Here I get out a piece of a silicone um, mat that my friend Cindy Utter gave me uh, to see what it would do with the gesso. It actually made some interesting marks. I can't wait to use it in paint. Um, then I had another one that had little, little nibbly, little tiny dots on it, and I decided to use that also you don't have to have anything except gesso or thick heavy body paint to do this if you don't have any gel mediums you can do it with gesso or or thick heavy body paint the really thick stuff um you probably could do this with some glues too um you might try it there are my little there's my little pot of dried up um tops to paint tubes <laughs> I just, cause you know, I can't throw anything away. I've been saving these for, kind of for quite a while. Um, and I just decided to stick some of them down and I'm using the um, gel medium. I just, yeah, I could have, I could have gone to town with it. I decided not to stick all of them down, but I did stick a few of them down. I thought it would be interesting and it was. Um, you'll see here in a minute, we're going to switch to a view of after I've gotten them all done, I pull them all down and I have that gesso bottle that's sitting on the table upside down. It's almost empty and it's one of the things I really, really want to use up because I have a lot of gesso. I don't know what the hell I was thinking buying all that gesso. Um, <laughs> so I want to use it up and I want to give all of this, like I said, a light brushing of gesso. So um we are going to pull it all down here in a minute and we are going to give everything a light, light brushing of gesso and um, you'll really see the texture pop out then. I even have bits of lace here. I think this is the one where I stick bits of lace to the, um, the product packaging and I do some more things with the stencil. I don't know. Uh, I was um, at a friend's wedding recently and their invitation had a piece of white lace on it. And of course, you know, being a mixed media artist, it's really hard to throw anything away. And when I get greeting cards and things in that have lace or die cut paper or something stuck to them, I usually end up taking them apart to save that bit to use in um, mixed media. Uh, my family knows not to throw any of the cards away right away. And I have... Um, a basket that they go in until I can go through them. Some more dryer sheet because I'm like I've got I've got uh, four of these dryer sheets. Got to use them all up. 
<laughs> um, my little drawer that I keep them in is full, so it's time to use some of them. So here we go. I've got um, all of them dry. I've got a little bit of Bible paper that is left over from a Monday with Deco Art canvas I was working on yesterday. Um, I'm filming this on August 9th and I decide that I want to use that up along with brushing them with a thick layer or a thin layer of gesso and you can see that it's creating some interesting effects putting that gesso on there pushing some colors back but bringing out some of the texture and as I'm going I'm going to use up those pieces of paper from the Bible pages and as you can see on this one I even found a washer laying on the garage floor and I decided hmm, I'm gonna stick that in there too <laughs> why not <clears throat> Uh, random piece of washi tape that was on my desk stuck it on there and just give it you know you're not looking to cover up the whole thing and covering up you know completely the fact that it's product packaging I think that adds some interest to the piece in my opinion um, so I wasn't looking to cover it up completely I just wanted to push some of the colors and things into the background so that when we go to do the painting part and that process that um, they're there in from a texture perspective but they're not dominant i don't want them to be dominant so i'm just as i'm going i'm using up that gesso that's the last of that gesso thank god i can open up a fresh bottle now um and these are some of the strips from the box of die cuts chipboards and things that i had and there were puzzle pieces in there i don't remember where they came from probably happy mail little pieces of cardboard, um, Tim Holtz tissue. And the whole point of this is not to glue anything down flat. You want it wrinkly. You want the edges to be sticking up. You want it to be kooky and crinkly. Um, that was one of the ones with stenciling on it. And it was okay, but I thought, hmm, I'm going to stick some Bible paper on there. And even with the Bible paper, if it got wrinkly and it, it you know, lifted up, I was okay with that. I want the texture. Now, see, this is one of the ones you could see that things really pop out um, when you put that gesso on there. That's the one with the lava rock. Look at the texture. We haven't even painted it yet. This is just gel medium and gesso and the texture bits. And they're already looking so interesting. The ones that I thought needed more texture and were lacking something were the ones that got the Bible pages. Um, and even the ones with the sparkly, I wanted some of the sparkly, but I wanted it to be pushed back a little bit. So I added gesso. That's actually a greeting card. That's actually not even product packaging. And I just thought it was interesting paper with an interesting background. You can see that that's a product packaging from Goob Glue. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that just saves all of these things. You buy a stencil, you buy a package of glue, you buy a foam brush. If it comes with a cardboard backer, then we save it, right? This is that core, that was that coarse te texture gel. This is the string gel, which is interesting stuff. I'm going to have to look up some videos on what you're supposed to do with it. I didn't even know I had it. It does dry interestingly. I have all these hooks above my desk if you haven't seen my studio before. And so as I'm doing these, I'm hanging them up uh, above the desk so that they dry. They're still hanging there. I have to take them down. And in the next video, we will be adding color to all the backgrounds. And then we will be going through them and doing some sort of focal point. What are we going to do with them after that? I don't know. Um, I might bind them all together with a binder ring. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I am really kind of wanting them to be like a journal of some sort. So um, they probably will be something like that. There is the one with the dried paint blobs from the paint tubes. 
at some point i decide that i need to see if i can get a little bit more gesso out of the bottle of gesso so i actually dig it out of the trash can and whack it on the table you can't hear the whacking but i do whack it on the table <laughs> There we go. See, I'm like whacking it. I'm like trying to like, please, can I get just a little bit more? There we go. There we have it. So I hope this gives you some ideas of what you can do. I'm going to link the video that inspired this in the description below. Please go watch it. Show her channel some love and let's have some fun playing with texture. All right. I'll see you all later. Don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Bye guys.